you're part of the mobile squad, right? Welcome to the family, man. Give me a hug. Come on, come on, give me a hug. Well, that's kind of weird. I just hugged my own camera, but I hope you felt that. Anyway, welcome back to another smartphone gimbal review. You know, finding the right gimbal is always difficult because there are so many out on the market. Each gimbal has their own unique feature and it's up to me to help you find the right smartphone stabilizer so that you can get the shots you need. I have reviewed a ton of gimbals in the past. Some of them I kept, some of them I sold. Maybe this new smartphone gimbal that I'm about to introduce to you will replace one of the older ones. Today, I will be reviewing the Moza Mini MX. Now, I enjoy using Moza's products and have worked with them for quite a time. It has been a year ago where I made a review of the original Moza Mini MX and many of you enjoyed watching it. If you haven't seen it, boy, you missed out. I will leave a link up here. Since then, Moza has made some great changes to it, which we will be covering in this video. As in every smartphone gimbal review, I will give you a quick overview of the Moza Mini MX, then talk about the build and design, show you how to mount and balance the gimbal, which by the way, has never been easier than before with this gimbal. We're also gonna talk about the basic button functions, advanced shooting modes, I'm also gonna walk you through the Moza Genie app where I will show you the camera settings I use for shooting great looking videos as well as the special features that it offers and finally give you a behind the scene of how I use the gimbal in action. How does that sound to you? Awesome? Now I'm sure you will get a lot out of this tutorial especially if you're starting out and never even held a gimbal in your hands before. So make sure to stick to the end as I will make you a gimbal Jedi. By the way, there will be a timestamp below if you wanna skip or go back to a particular part of the video. With that said, let's get started. <sighs> what the hell was that? You always tried to be the funny guy, but can't you just be normal? People say I need to be myself, so by being weird, I'm myself. So it's important that you understand your gimbal and know how it functions. You want to be able to operate quickly so that it becomes second nature to you. So here's a quick overview of the Moza Mini MX2. On top, you have the electric phone holder. You got the tilt pan and roll motors allowing you to move in all three axes. On the panel, you have your joystick. Below is the FN button. To the left side, you have the zoom plus and minus function. The blue light is the power indicator. To the side, you have a type C charging port. Close to the hand grip, you have a smart trigger. You also have a one quarter screw hole to mount the included tripod. Now in terms of build and design, it looks quite the same as its predecessor. Predecessor, predecessor. I like how they kept the design of the tripod leg that allows me to hold the gimbal with both hands for more control and stability. It feels ergonomic, allowing me to shoot comfortably at all angles to get the shots I need. Also, the tripod can be placed on a flat surface to record a time lapse. You can also replace the tripod leg and use an extendable tripod, for example, to create a drone like shot. Now the gimbal isn't heavy, it weighs at around 423 grams. The max payload is 280 grams, which can easily support the iPhone 13 Pro Max. You can fold the gimbal to take it everywhere with you. The battery can power the gimbal up to 24 hours if properly balanced, but hey, who shoots 24 hours, right? In this section, I will show you how you can easily mount and balance your smartphone with the Moza Mini MX2. I'll be using the iPhone 13 Pro Max for that. First, rotate the lower part by 180 degree, counterclockwise as indicated. Then I'll lock the tilt and roll motor by rotating it. You should hear a clicking sound. Then mount the included tripod leg and make sure the buttons are facing towards you. Long press the power button and just like that, the phone holder will automatically open. It's like magic. Place your phone in the center and the gimbal will sense your phone and the clamp will automatically close and balance it. This is a new feature they added which I haven't seen on any uh, other stabilizer which is great if you want to save time and focus on your shoot. If your phone isn't centered, you can reposition it by press holding the trigger button and then plus to open the holder and to close it, same thing, press the trigger button and then the minus. To remove your phone, first press the trigger button and hold while long pressing the power button. As you remove your phone, the holder will close and the gimbal will turn off. 
You never have to struggle again with balancing your gimbal. It does it all for you. Let's move on to the basic button functions so that you can operate quicker when shooting with your phone. If you prefer using the native camera app, you can use the FN button to start and stop recording. Be sure that your phone is connected to the gimbal via Bluetooth. You can also change from landscape to portrait mode by triple pressing the FN button. This works well, but if you want to take full advantage of the gimbal's features, then it's best to use the Moza Genie app, which we will be getting into later. Let's look at some of the other basic functions. With the joystick, you can move the camera in different directions. By click holding the smart trigger, you'll enter all lock mode, which locks all motors. Double click and hold the smart trigger to enter sport gear mode, which is great for recording fast moving subject. Double clicking it will recenter the camera. By the way, these smart trigger functions also work with the native camera app on the iPhone. Now I will also show you the other button functions that I haven't mentioned uh, when we take a closer look at the Moza Genie app. Next, we have the advanced shooting modes that can help you achieve the shots you need. The iPhone 13 Pro Max has great sensor shift stabilization, but for long and complex movements, nothing beats a good gimbal. To switch shooting modes, press the zoom plus. You can switch between the pan tilt and pan follow. I personally like to use the pan tilt most of the time as I can move the camera up or down and left and right at the same time, resulting in a natural looking movement. Pressing zoom minus will enter FPV, which unlocks all motors for a first person view experience. In this mode, you can use the joystick to rotate your phone to create an inception effect. Unlike the older model, you can now enter inverted mode by putting the gimbal upside down, which will then automatically rotate the phone for you to get a low angled shot without having the motors blocking the frame. As you can see with just a few buttons, you can quickly change to different modes, making it versatile to use and you don't even have to use the Moza Genie app for that. But let's now take a closer look at the Moza Genie app since it comes with some cool features that can help you shoot more creatively. Now I will walk you through the interface and show you the camera settings I use to get the most out of your videos. If you haven't downloaded the Moza Genie app yet, make sure to do that and connect your gimbal with your phone via Bluetooth. Make sure your gimbal is up to date. If not, I will leave a tutorial in the video description below for you to follow along. So let's start off by opening up the Moza Genie app. And we're now gonna connect our device via Bluetooth. I'm gonna press here and then select connect. And our device is now connected. I'm gonna change it to landscape mode by triple pressing the FN button. All right, so this is the interface. It's quite intuitive. Now at the very bottom left, you have the battery indicator of your phone and gimbal, as well as the current uh, gimbal mode you're in. So right now we're in pan and tilt follow. And to the very right, you have your shooting mode. So right now we're in video, but you can select photo, time-lapse and slow motion. Now there's also a cool time-lapse feature uh, called trajectory delay. And in this mode, I can create a moving time-lapse. Now our camera is set to auto right now, but if you wanna have full control over your camera, you wanna to switch to the pro mode. So let's do that right now. And this gives us more control uh, over our white balance, ISO and shutter speed. So we're gonna start off with the resolution that is set to 4K and our frame rate at the very right is set to 60 frames per second. So 4K has more detail and allows me to crop in post and 60 frames per second is great if you wanna slow down your footage to create a more dramatic effect. The next thing we're gonna adjust is our shutter speed, which is currently set to one over 60. Since we're shooting in 60 frames per second, we wanna set it double our frame rate. So that would be one over 120 to get that natural looking motion blur. And my shutter speed is now locked and you can always adjust your shutter speed if it's too bright outside you can increase it to avoid overexposure the iso i keep as low as possible around 23 now if i don't have any light source available the last option would be to increase the iso but keep in mind that it can introduce a lot of noise in your image 
we're now gonna move over to white balance, which is currently set to auto. You wanna make sure that your white balance is locked and you can use these presets up here depending on the location you're shooting in. Now, because we're shooting outside and it's a bit cloudy, I'm gonna select the cloud preset. Um, you can also set your white balance manually by adjusting the slider. So since we're in my room, I'm going to set it to around 4,900 Kelvin and it's now locked. You also have different lens choices. Right now we're using the selfie lens, but if I switch to the front facing camera, wide angle, telephoto, ultra wide and so on but I usually stick with the wide angle lens since that is the better lens of all three on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now to the right, you also have different uh, color presets. So you can actually record with these presets uh, without having the need to color grade in post. But I don't use these presets since I prefer um, adjusting the colors in my editing program but it's still a great option to have if you're, for example, vlogging and need to you know, create quick content. So at the very top right, like I said, you can switch uh, between the front and uh, selfie camera. So let's now head over to the gimbal settings. Right now I have sport gear mode enabled and this allows me to shoot fast moving subjects better. I can also do a horizontal adjustment the joystick speed is set to steady because when I use it, I really want smooth camera movements. Then you can also calibrate your gimbal if you have problems with it. Now, right below it, you can hide the interface to have a clear view of your screen. To the very bottom left, you have additional camera settings. So you can also go live if you want to. You also have camera anti-shake mode, uh, which are basically different stabilization options. Now, if you want the smoothest gimbal movement, cinematic is a great option, but keep in mind that in this stabilization mode, you won't get the uh, smart tracking feature, which I will be showing you later. That's why I like to keep it in standard. Then you can also enable the flash whenever you start recording. You have a silent recording as well. One thing I like enabling is the spirit level. This way I also know if my uh, gimbal is properly balanced, but I'm gonna leave it off for now. Then I also have overexposure tips, which uh, are basically zebra stripes that will show me which areas are underexposed and which areas overexposed. This can be really useful. Now at the bottom right, we have uh, different grid options. So right now I have the rule of thirds enabled to better set my composition. Then you also have safe area, but I keep it at 100%. You also have frame to set different aspect ratios. So if you want those letterbox in your videos, you could actually set it to a 2.39 by one aspect ratio, which will give you these letter boxes. Now, if we switch cameras again, now in the center of the bottom, we have the zoom slider that allows me to zoom in and out, but I can actually also use the zoom plus button to zoom in or out. So let's now look at some of the special features that the Moza Genie app offers. So at the top right, you have this blue box uh, indicated as M. These are actually different video presets. Now, if you're someone that needs content quickly, this is a great option because if I choose this, for example, um, it will create the video for you. At the very top left, you have the tutorial. And once you're ready, it will start uh, creating the video for you. And this way you can really focus on what content you want to create, but all the camera movements are done uh, using these video templates. Then we have smart tracking. So by selecting this, I can draw a box around my face and it will start tracking me and it does a very good job at it. Now, if you need to follow fast moving subjects like a person running, you can use the tracking feature uh, to always have him in the frame. But I think this is also a great option for those that uh, like to vlog. By the way, you can also use the smart trigger uh, to activate smart tracking and it will automatically recognize my face and to stop it just press the smart trigger once again then we have gesture control so by selecting it 
I can do the peace sign to start recording or do a fist sign to stop recording. So let's test that out. I'm gonna do the peace sign and it will start recording. I'm gonna stop recording. So it responds quite well. And you can actually combine these two. So if I do a tracking and I can start recording at the same time, which makes creating videos really easy. To the bottom right, you have your library. Um, so I can actually select these two and edit it. So the Mozart Genie app actually has a built-in editor um, that is quite intuitive and easy to use. Uh, similar like InShot, um, where you can really edit your video and export it and upload it straight to your social media. The Mozart Mini MX2 is priced at $109, which is an affordable price for what you get. I really like the hassle-free setup. I can just turn on the gimbal, place my phone in it, and I'm ready to go. This gimbal is packed with some great features, and I think a lot of you uh, will make good use of it. I personally prefer using the native camera app and Filmic Pro since I'm familiar with those two and don't necessarily need the extra features except when shooting hyperlapse since the tracking feature makes it really easy. For me, it's important that a gimbal can operate smoothly and when using the iPhone 13 Pro Max, I had no issues with it and the footage looked really amazing. You really want to avoid having robotic movement and being able to hold the gimbal with both hands really helps for a natural looking movement. But like with every gimbal, it does take practice, but hopefully with this video, I was able to shorten your learning curve. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the Moza Mini MX. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so because we are soon reaching 100K, which is absolutely mind blowing. But hey, if you're really family bro, I actually made these as smartphone filmmaking hats, uh, which are now available for you to purchase on my website. It makes me look professional whenever I'm on a shoot. If you do happen to buy one of these and support my channel, make sure to share it in the group. That'd be awesome. Now, for those that are new to smartphone filmmaking, I have a free smartphone filmmaking guide that you can download for free that will help you get started making great looking videos. Now, if you're still hungry for more, make sure to check out these two videos, but promise me to go out and shoot afterwards because just watching my tutorials all day won't get you any further. You have to practice. Thank you so much for watching, stay mobile, and I will see you in the next video.